340. That's the number of claims that have been filed against the Archdiocese of Santa Fe as it goes through the bankruptcy process. Attorneys say that while most claims are sealed, sexual abuse claims against priests clearly make up the bulk of those filings. And that's on top of the hundreds of settlements the church, which is one of three dioceses in New Mexico, has settled since the mid-90s. This is a sad chapter. And Harry, the Catholic Church still carries a lot of weight here. There's no doubt about that. Right. So what do you make of the Archbishop's public-facing stance on the bankruptcy process as it's gone to this point? Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is that you can't view what he's t saying now in isolation. Mm. So can you make a, a case that when you have a large number of claims, and the deadline is not just for you know, sexual abuse claims, but it's also other sorts of uh, civil uh, claims, and mm -hmm. there's not enough uh, money uh, there to satisfy you know, everybody, so mm -hmm. some measure of justice would require a orderly process to go through bankruptcy to make sure that while people aren't gonna be made whole, at least they're going to get some sort of satisfaction. The problem is this comes on the heels of years and years and decades and decades of disclaiming uh, responsibility, of not owning up to what the church uh, should have uh, done. I mean, I went to a seminary, I recall Jesus saying something about children and millstones, and yet it really felt like the church for a long time wasn't taking responsibility. You add to that some of the reporting about the diocese shifting assets uh, either to local parishes right. or into a trust, and it really raises the fundamental question about whether the PR strategy of saying we're accepting uh, responsibility, we're doing this for the benefit of everybody, mm -hmm. matches up with the history of what happened before. Mm -hmm. You know, Tom, is, uh, uh, the, Arch the diocese has already paid uh, out more than five, 50 million, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, in, so far. And it's a hard question to ask, but it is the diocese just simply trying to protect those assets, trying to play long ball here, but at the same time, try, try to settle these claims. Can both be done? Can you satisfy both situations here? Yeah, well, I think that's one of the things we'll learn through the bankruptcy process. Right. You know, bankruptcy has three different phases. Chapter 11 is the first part, and then you move to 13 and 7, and there's some attorneys who know a lot more about that than I do. But with respect to, you know, salvaging the perception that, uh, that Harry mm -hmm. brought up, uh, that's really going to be the key because mm -hmm. when all this broke, you know, the Catholic Church really was able to say, okay, you know, the church is behind you. Uh, we're really addressing the individual priests. Mm -hmm. But then as the lawsuits were filed and the church, you know, sought bankruptcy protection, uh, the perception shifted uh, mm -hmm. pretty dramatically. Whereas it was really all of a sudden the church was what was in, in peril as far as perception goes. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that the, the efforts of the, you know, the current archbishop and, you know, the, all the different parishes right now is one of survival, but also its relevance too. Mm. Um, you know, how can well. you maintain your faith uh, which is, you know, uh, everybody's personal decision. Uh, you know, how do you maintain your faith during this time? Right. Uh, because, you know, there's the legal side, which will definitely, vet, you know, uh, vet itself out. But then there's the personal faith side uh, that a lot of parishioners are working through right now. That's really well said. I appreciate you saying that. Absolutely. You know, and Giovanna, the window uh, as it's been reported is closed for it to file. But there's an idea there may be a latecomers mm. pile of money for those kind of folks. Does that strike you as, a, as, a, as the proper thing to do? I mean, having a hard deadline is one thing, but that's a hard thing if you're a victim. It doesn't exactly work like that. You have the state and you do these things beforehand. Sometimes it takes a little bit extra for a victim to kind of come forward a little bit. Is, yeah. is this the best way to go? I mean, mm -hmm. the right thing to do. Right. <laughs> That's such a big discussion, right, with this topic. Um, mm -hmm. In that particular situation, mm -hmm. um, you know, first of all, there have been, what, 22 other states to, or archdioceses across the country have declared bankruptcy. So this is not mm -hmm. something new. Right. Um, we right. could learn from what other states have done. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely think um, closing the door to victims is not the right way to go. Okay. So mm -hmm. however that needs to be hammered out and wh whatever needs to happen to be able to include mm -hmm. victims from over the decades, and some as, as has been reported and as we know from abuse um, uh, literature and history, people don't necessarily report until they're an adult. That's and right. so mm -hmm. closing right. them out is yep. really not fair, first yep. of all. And we're, we're dealing with such deep systemic issues here mm -hmm in an organization that um, really hasn't changed uh, with, with the way society has changed, right? We mm -hmm. still don't have women mm -hmm. <laughs> priests. Mm -hmm. um, Fair point. We don't have women really in leadership in the organization, and we have a lot of abuse going on. And 
and it's like, when are we, you know, w mm -hmm. when are we going to deal with some of those systemic issues mm -hmm. um, instead of a band-aiding, band-aid approach? Mm -hmm. Exactly right. You know, Janice, the idea of moving assets around, protecting some assets, letting some assets be out there sort of for the taking, what's your sense of how the church is approaching this? I, I, I can sort of see where they're going with the individual parishes. It's a tough one, though, to uh, well, put my I, arms I, around. I, you know, and I think this is especially tough for New Mexico. You know, we've mm -hmm. had the, the Church of the Paracletes. I mean, it was mm -hmm. around when I was a teenager, and I believe that we believe that everything was being taken care of. Mm -hmm. And in truth, what happened with the leadership of the church is those individuals who were not healed were put into our communities and mm -hmm. did more damage. So there is this real undercurrent of, I don't trust you. That's right. And so here are all of these assets and, and now the church is moving them around. And I certainly don't uh, uh, disagree that they should protect their assets, mm -hmm. but it's to such an extent mm -hmm. that I'm thinking, wait, 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 there has been a lot of damage here. Is this fair? Mm -hmm. And so when I brought to your attention is I kind of looked at it and one of the assets that is not covered seems to be St. Pius High School. Mm -hmm. I think that's really kind of odd. Mm -hmm. um, why? And, and it turns out on the, in the uh, bankruptcy proceedings, mm -hmm. it's two thirds of the assets. Wow. Uh, so what? So so now we have been harmed because we we didn't face up to the issue. Right. It has continued, and yep. the, and the church fibbed about it, right. and now we have this anchor in our community that you know I don't know that much about bankruptcy, sure. but if you need money, do you sell your assets? Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. I don't know. Right. Uh, and I and I don't know that part. But did they, did they, when you looked at those at the filing, did you happen to see what they listed that asset value at St. Pius? Did they actually uh, twenty one million? Twenty one million. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Harry, what is that in, when you when you hear this again? Yeah. It, it's kind of the same question, kind of circling around, but we can't help it here. You know, the church has a right to protect their assets, right. but they have a bigger moral obligation to Absolutely. make people whole. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? And so, why not just put it all out there, have mm -hmm. an, a, as deep a fund as you can get? Right. Yeah. To Giovanna's point, to help as many people as you can and mm -hmm. just do the, the right thing. I mean, to mm -hmm. engage in a little bit of theological analysis, uh, it really asks the fundamental question about what the church is for and who the uh, church is uh, for. And mm -hmm. preserving the church as an institution to support itself and propagate itself mm -hmm. really strikes me as so far uh, beyond the point. It's like you're completely uh, missing the uh, plot. It's really about a witness, and if you're in the Catholic Church, it's about a witness to, you know, a faith in uh, God, you know, in a particular uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, way. So, it's better for the church to be almost asset, you know, free, but to have been faithful to its uh, witness. You can rebuild that. If you have a, a church that is, uh, you know, nourishing a people and you know attending to their needs, people will come uh, back to that and people will uh, support that. Mm -hmm. The danger I think the church is uh, running is in trying to be too clever by a half. It's really communicating that what matters is the maintenance of the institutional church, and then you're back to Tom's point about how do you get that trust uh, back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maintaining a set of assets but losing the soul of the church just strikes me as both morally wrong and organizationally wrong. Good point there, the benefit of the doubt, Tom, is a very tough thing once you lose it. You know what I mean? You, it's hard to get back. So once again, you know, I, no one would sit here and say we can find every victim and make them whole. Nobody could, could hope, we can hope for that, but it's just not going to happen. So how far should the church go with their finances here? Should they give up things like St. Pius? You know what I mean? Just have an endless pool of money here, as, as endless as they could possibly have. And, and that's where the balance is. You know, there is Giovanna said, you know, to do the right thing. You know, that is really at the moral center of, of it all. Right. Um, whether you do the right thing at the expense of the existence of, uh, of a church entity, mm -hmm. uh, that's where the balance comes in. Yep. It also takes uh, also that the Pope has weighed in a little bit, Janice, on this, but, you know, some leadership at the top. That's an important part of this here, you know? Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. but, and kind of going back to what Giovanni said, you know, there, there are victims here. Yes. And they need compensation. When I look at the assets, uh, um, it's not there. Mm -hmm. Is it an insurance? 
I don't know. Right. But so is this then, I mean, and they've been accused of playing a shell game. That's right. I don't know. Right. But in making people whole, we keep saying that, I, I don't know exactly what that means in this situation. It mm -hmm. certainly doesn't mean just a check, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think we need to be looking at other things that the, that the church can be doing and mm -hmm. the community can be doing yeah. to support these people right. and their families. Good point there. And the settlements have been secret too. So yeah. that's a big part of it. Senator Tom Udall is up next talking with us about slowing or stopping the run-up to an armed conflict with Iran.